Jesus said, all that come to me, the Father hath given me. My goodness, we see, we have to read tonight because you may have forgotten who you are. You may have forgotten the scheme of things. You may have forgotten the continuance of things, where you're going to end up. What's real and what's not real. Because I'll tell you right now, everything you see in the world, every change that happens in the world is not as real as you think it is. But every person you impact is real. Everyone you depart love to is real. Every genuine act is real. But don't trust your eyes. Given the situations in the world, don't you do it? Don't even trust death, because there is no death. Do you hear me? There's no death. Death is for the flesh. You are no longer flesh, but spirit. Do you know what's happening to you? You were born here one way. You're leaving a very different way. Even right now, you've gone through a transition of faith. You believe in the Lord in truth. It's not based upon you getting everything you want. It's based upon the truth that Jesus is Lord, that the Father is the Father. He is the Creator. You believe in the Word of God, not some lazy interpretation or interpretation that may benefit you, but you have gained respect of His Word, the Lord's Word, not so that you can have it and turn it into something you want to turn it into. You're unnatural. You got to realize who you are. You also have to realize that you were sent here on this earth with an unnatural faith. At a time just like this, for a time just like this, you knew that the Lord was based in love. That one scripture, God is love. Do you know how many times that's ignored? And people trying to skip, dance, and parade around it, never really adopting the fact that God is love. Many gave us commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. And God is love. People dance around that. They see a weakness in it. They get angry when you start talking about it. Have you noticed how in the world can a person get angry and they truly believe in Christ? How can a person seek their brother to slaughter their brother and they truly believe in Christ? No, no. That's Antichrist. Oh, yes, it is. The warping of the Word of God to suit somebody's own paradigm is an Antichrist spirit. And you're in those days. Even the apostles spoke about the Antichrist. Those that deny that Jesus came in the flesh. Well, how do you deny that? By not forgiving your fellow man. All those who fail to forgive are of an antichrist spirit. That's why all hatred will be wiped off the face of this earth. But all vessels who have ever given these things homes and agreed to keep them shall be wiped out with it. I'll tell you something else. Evil must rise. God said so himself. But people, they don't understand what that is. Why in the world would God let evil rise? And that sounds backward, doesn't it? You have a lot of people out there right now saying, no, we, we're supposed to destroy evil. Really? You don't destroy evil. You're to assist to call your brothers and sisters out of the evil. They must make a choice to be free of the evil. You cannot make that choice for them. Because if you free them from evil, but evil is still in their hearts, their incan condition is going to be worse than the first. This is not Robin Hood, nor is it Hollywood. This is real. As a person desires to be free, so we can assist. If they choose to be free, we assist. They must choose. We live as examples. Isn't that an honor? How many of you would be deeply honored to be an example selected by the living God, put in this earth of his gospels? How many of you want to be an example of his gospel? Many are saying, yes, I would. Can I speak to you in a brother-to-brother -brother capacity, brother-to-sister capacity? Only because I love you. Only because I want to see people make it. No, maybe I'm not like these other folks out there that want to be right. I'm not trying to be right. I'm going to see you make it. So you know what that means? If I see a spot that can hinder you, would you mind if I told you? Now, many of you just said you would like to be an example of the gospel. You would be honored to be an example of the gospel. But when your life is turned upside down, you don't understand why. But you just said you want to be an example of the gospel. Well, let me share this with you. If I wanted to be an example of the gospel, first of all, it's up to the Lord to select how I'm going to be used. Because I know that the apostles were utilized to be examples of the gospel. I know that Jesus was the example of love. Have you noticed that every example of a good and holy thing suffered the most? To be an example of love, you've got to be a target of, 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 of severe hatred. To be an example of forgiveness, you've got to be one of those of whom many will not forgive you. You've got to live in adverse conditions, a miserable life. You've got to be hated, rejected, and everything else. If you're going to walk as a demonstration of love, my, my, you're going to have wickedness all around you. 
all the time. See, we ask, we want these things, but we don't understand because someone has lied to us so long that everything is all mixed up that our minds are rewired to see things in this backward sense. And we become afraid of the smallest things and we whimper away. The Lord didn't make you to whimper away. He put within just one of you all power over the enemy. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Because that's what he wrote for truth in just one of you. He gave you all power over the enemy. Not some all power over the enemy. He cannot stop you. You know what stops us? We second guess. We're unsure. We want to follow one day, but then again, we don't. Somebody has convinced us that you're only to receive the good that they call good. And that's what messes us up. We need the truth. And the truth is, if you're going to demonstrate the gospel, you're going to stand as an example in this world to many of what the gospel is. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. The good news to who? To the broken, to the blind, to the deaf, to the lame, the outcasts, the true wounded of this world. That's what it was good news for. It wasn't good news to the Pharisees. It was not good news to the lawyers and the scribes. It was good news to the broken, the man that was at the temple. Most people don't even notice that. Where were the elders of the community during that time? You guys didn't notice where the wounded were? They were at the temple with their beds. They lived there. They can no longer work. They were at the temple, as God instructed in the old book, in the Old Testament. Oh, that's been lost. I would go so far as to say is that people have changed so much in the Word of God that hardly anybody understands the structure that really was back then. It's right there in your Bibles if you would just read it yourself. I'm talking about read it and not let anybody else's voice enter into your mind. Read it for yourself. God's house was a house of refuge. How that people would come in God's house. The broken would come and be healed. People would come there and recover. The miracles happened in the house of God. And then Satan came. Just as was told in the book of Jeremiah, it carried on to the New Testament. How that God's house would be turned into a den of thieves. And everything would be turned upside down and backward. They had money changers in the temple. Not the elderly who were broken. Not the ones in the world who were broken. You see, the wrong thing was in God's house when Jesus came to this earth. And here again, even more things have been adopted in our generation. So much so, it is very difficult to tell a person what spiritual sight is. They still think it's mystic. It is so very difficult to tell somebody what the spiritual realm is. They still think it's just like somebody has described to them who's not even seen it themselves. Modern day man does not even know that demonic entities are playing, playing tricks on them. A great reversal is about to take place. All who thought they commanded the spiritual realm, when the stops are pulled out and the truth is made known, many will shriek in horror because in their pride, they walk forward thinking they banished something under their own power. By their pride, they operate. And believe me, they're going to pay the price for that pride. Love is light. It banishes, not man. Love does not hate. It doesn't do violent things. Believers, it, it, it is a fight. The lies are thick. The deception is real. It, it's We're in a fight. The evidence is the peace. You see, a lot of people have no peace. I mean, Peace. Are you disturbed in your heart? Because if you are, this is the time to admit it, no longer covering it up. This is that time. But you don't have to tell me. You need to tell your Messiah to say, Lord, I, I, I don't have peace. I don't have peace. In fact, I'm miserable. Tell him the truth. Don't hide it another day. Stop doing what you were taught to do by those who had no idea what they were doing. Because where are they at now? They're in misery too. They don't have the peace that surpasses is all understanding. They have headaches because in the book of Daniel, God has already given to us that King Nebuchadnezzar is the head, the model of the kingdom. And if you begin to look at Babylon and the traits of Babylon, then you'll see what the world truly is. You'll see why in the Bible, God says, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. In other words, yes, you're in these nations. Do not partake of the sinful things these nations do. You separate yourselves from it. You don't belong to these kingdoms. You're here for a purpose. You're ambassadors to Christ, which means this is not your home. This is not your paradise. But you've been sent here on assignment. Your plight's not over. Now, let me share this with you. Again, I see 
say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, well, who's going to ask you anything? Who is he talking about here? He began talking about the little ones. He began talking about not offending the little ones. He, he began talking about those of you who offend one of these little ones, it's better if a millstone be tied around your neck. He talked about the spirit of offense or stumbling. Then he talked about somebody wronging you. And they don't believe you. Well, see, we know the Lord. And we know that we, he's talking to his disciples, by the way. Who would ask his disciples anything? Those would be the individuals that come up and they say, brothers, pray for me. Now, let me tell you the truth about this scripture. Most people, because they're so used to asking for things for themselves, are failing to see that Jesus is talking to them about doing the work of the Lord. When you do the work of the Lord, you're already getting your paycheck. You don't have to ask the Lord every single time you see him, are you going to get paid on Friday? You trust him, then you know you're going to get paid. What you will ask him for is I need some more bandages for Lucy over here. I need uh, another crutch for Charlie. Uh, uh, so and so, they need their eyesight back. How do you know they need their eyesight? They just ask me. Now, when two or three, two, two or more of you are together, asking for something for someone else is going to be established. Not asking for yourselves. You don't have to ask for anything. You're supposed to be working. When two or three of us are gathered together in his name for something like that, it's not for us. It's for them. You're automatically covered. See, but what has happened is if for something has gotten into the church and people walk around praying for themselves 24 hours a day. The same way in this parable, this person was turned over to the tormentors. Jesus is speaking here. He says, so likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you. If you from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. He didn't say every other one. He didn't say everybody but the one with the special case because he did something terrible to you. He said everybody. If you don't forgive every single soul that sinned against you, you're going where the tormentors are going. Do you know why? Because you do not have any spirit of the living God in you. You reject Jesus of Nazareth. You are a persecutor of men. You stand in the way of sinners and sit in the seat of the scornful. And you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. See, I never have to worry about this part. Do you know why? Because I'm that person that said, Lord, have patience with me. I'm that person who spoke to Christ Jesus and said, Lord, have patience with me. There's no way I can look upon anybody else and not have all patience with them. So I pray for them so they can get it right. I know the snares and the traps of this world. Anybody who can sit there and accuse another person, I don't care what the reason is. They don't know the snares and the traps of this world, but they're going to find out because if they continue to walk in unforgiveness, should the Lord take their lives right now at this moment, they will not step foot in the kingdom of God. They do not have eternal life, but they are damned. And Jesus was not playing in Matthew 18, 35. He said, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespass, every single person, every single soul. See, these folks that walk around saying, oh, you got time. No, you don't have time. You have this moment. Because if you think you have time, if you really decide to hate them another minute, how can the Spirit of the Lord be within you who gave his life for such? The very ones you won't forgive, Jesus gave his life for out of love. How can you have the Spirit of the living God within you? If you want that turned around, you better find him now. See, sometimes the word is twisted. Well, not sometimes. A lot of times this word is twisted. It is not spoken by the perspective of love. That's our Savior's perspective. That's his view, is love. Do you see how these things can be lost in this day and age? When I read to you guys, Matthew 18, 19, it sounded strange when you heard the word they, because we're used to asking for things for ourselves when the Lord requested things for other folks. And we are to walk as he did, requesting things for other folks. See, we belong to Christ. And why do we doubt him so much? Why do we say in our hearts he won't take care of us? That we have to remind him to take care of us. I never have to remind Christ to take care of me. Folks, don't let that darkness corrupt the word of God in you. Don't let it destroy you. Don't let it consume you. If it can, it will. If you agree, it will. Please don't agree with it. But agree with love and with truth. Listen, the Lord's faithfulness has unmatched his resolve 
It's unbelievable. His love for you is greater than you're able to comprehend. He knows your situation. Choose him in all ways. Do so from the heart. Get your words from Jesus. And stand up during these times for someone. As someone stood up for you. The Lord's blessings, even his hand is surely upon you. And with that in your heart, you would love to see his hand upon others. God bless each of you.